The first speaker uh, is from Cisco. If you, anybody here not heard of Cisco? If you haven't, raise your hand and we'll have security escort you out of the building. Um, Lily Turner has real street cred. She's fascinating. She's a real pioneer, loves to be out there in front. She's a pioneering member of the Emerging Technologies Group inside Cisco that's looking for the next billion dollar business inside that company. Uh, she's been instrumental in being a a driver of strategy, particularly their video strategy for the corporation, and she's de she deals with really high-profile customers, government leaders, uh, nonprofit organizations. She's led companies like Pacific Bell and Synopsys. She's got a bachelor's degree in economics from UC Berkeley, and she's got the coveted PMP designation from the Project Management Institute. She's going to open up the day by talking about borderless education, breaking barriers of time and difference. So please. Please welcome Ms. Lily Turner. Good morning. Uh, I'm excited to be here and um, I'm very appreciative for the opportunity to uh, present to you today. And I'm gonna speak for just a quick minute to those of us who are probably celebrating their fourth or fifth, 25th anniversary. You know, uh, I have a 15 year old and when she was about 10, she wanted a, a cell phone. And I kept saying, what on earth do you need with a cell phone? You aren't going anywhere that I don't know about. <laughs> but consistently, mom, I need a cell phone. So by the time she got 13, um, we decided to break down and she asked every family member to bombard my husband and I to just convince us to give her a phone. And so one day I was sitting and I said, you know, why do you need this phone, Mariah? And she said, mom, I wanna keep in touch with my friends. And it made me think, when I was 10, we passed notes in class. I'm dating myself. But this generation texts. They don't pass notes in class, they text. When I was 10, we had pen pals and we used what we call snail mail today. My kids have pen pals and they email. When I wanted to get together with friends, it was friends coming to my house I'm going to their house or we're on the phone. When my kids want to get together with their friends, they go on Facebook. And so just in a short period of time, we've seen even the world of education change dramatically. The pace of innovation uh, and technological change coupled with major shifts in student faculty and societal expectations are really redefining traditional norms thus creating what I would call the perfect storm for transformation. Those who embrace the revolution will flourish and achieve unprecedented results. Those that don't will be left behind. I firmly believe that technology coupled with visionary leadership can foster cutting edge innovation that establishes new paradigms for learning and for human interactions. My request of you today is simply to imagine, to go back to that childhood creativity and open your minds to what is possible. Sorry, lost myself. In the words of Jamie Paolinetti, limitations live only in our minds, but if we use our imaginations, our possibilities become endless. Oh, my slides, okay. Sorry, I'm not sure which way to uh, advance the slides. Okay, perfect. So today we'll spend a little bit of time first talking about trends in higher education uh, and what's changing there. A number of universities have adopted technology to create what I call the new campus experience. And so we're going to explore what's taking place around the globe for new campuses and even how we extend the borders of a classroom and redefine what a classroom really is. Um, other places are even redefining what we would consider a campus community. So we'll spend some time there and then talking about how do we go global. How do we just reach beyond where we are today, ultimately to make an impact on the world? Higher education 
is now catering to a rapidly changing clientele. As influxes of new or what we call evergreen students enter campuses that are very technology savvy and expect their schools to offer the same types of technologies that they leverage in their everyday lives. Evergreen students bring with them the consumer trends and technologies they've adopted in their lifestyle. For example, Global Equities Research reports that 70% of all entering college freshmen in 2010 come to school with a Mac. These trends and technologies improve and customize the learning experience by allowing students to access content no matter where they are, create their own communities, and even personalize their interactions. Supporting the human network in which people can connect and communicate globally to facilitate collaboration and accelerate creativity and transformation is no longer optional as students and faculties reach outside of the borders of the traditional campus to gain knowledge and also to share expertise. We're finding that universities are also extending the responsibility of education beyond just the, the faculty members, where students are actively participating even in the curriculum development process reaching from a large repertoire of strategies and skills, participating in project work and interdisciplinary uh, activities. Assessments also complement traditional classroom interactions, and innovative technologies enable professors to evolve technology teaching methods. So what's inspiring the new connections? You all are in education, you experience it every day. The students you're educating today, again, are very different than those that were uh, in school when I was in school and even just 10 years ago. Therefore, we have to create a new infrastructure to engage students in the learning process and provide these students with 21st century skills that they need to be successful. A key characteristic of a 21st century school is one that intelligently applies technology to transform education. Connected education embeds technology across every aspect of the organization, not just in one department, or just for students or for administrative uses, but district-wide to every employee, every job function, every student, every teacher. In a recent study done at Cisco, we found that by 2015, there will be 25 billion connected devices worldwide. That equates to 3.5 devices per person. Other statistics include the fact that IP traffic is increasing fourfold by 2014, fueled by video. While a picture is worth a thousand words, a video says it all. 64% of all communication is nonverbal. High definition video is creating in person experiences that are driving unprecedented engagements. Other examples 20 million, that's two zero, 20 million videos are uploaded to Facebook per month and two billion videos are watched on Facebook every month. By 2014, over 400 million of the world's internet users will access the network solely through a mobile connection. Mobile video will be responsible for the majority of mobile data traffic growth from now until 2014. So how are these technologies being adopted? Duke University created a strategic plan that called for harnessing information technology to achieve the university's mission. In early 2009, Duke's provosts, deans, and chief information officers engaged with Cisco to strategize about the role of technology in education and how they would educate the next generation of leaders. What birthed from that engagement is a revolutionary instructional model appropriately titled the classroom of the future. 
By integrating collaborative technologies into the classroom experience and the university process, Duke is seemingly, seamlessly connecting its global campuses, broadly scale, scaling internal knowledge and expertise, and while exposing students and faculties to global thought leaders and industry innovators. Duke's vision is for students to learn not only alongside other people in the room, but also with people around the world. Harvard University, about 18 months ago, uh, in conjunction with other major universities in the six New England states, began adopting Cisco Telepresence to drive greater internal and external collaboration. Educators quickly realized the potential of telepresence and understood that it, what it meant in the research and education uh, arena is that drastic change was required in order for success. Thus, the Northern, Calif uh, the Northern Crossroads was born, in a, and it is a collective exchange comprised of multiple community anchor tenants committed to globally interconnecting K through 12 and smaller colleges to the larger educational institutions. These anchor tenants host uh, the connections for these uh, smaller schools such that the entry, uh, they remove the barriers to entry. Cost is, is always prohibitive with a small school. And so what Harvard and others, uh, Georgia Tech, uh, MIT, Duke, to name a few, are hosting this internet exchange whereby they are extending their staff to these smaller universities, but also into uh, international countries like Africa. Um, the Internet 2 NRL Cisco Telepresence Exchange today supports more than 160 telepresence systems in 16 countries. Harvard was also a very early adopter of video technologies and began recording and actually storing its lectures. Desires to protect intellectual property prevented the institution from fully benefiting from the vast collection of video assets. We know that YouTube is popular, but we also know that YouTube is not secure. And so with Cisco Show and Share, Duke, uh, Harvard was able to enable a secure environment where they could publish those video assets where students and faculty could not only access, but also search, edit, and comment on those recorded lectures. Faculty members then took that content and are using it to help develop the next set of course curriculum. I also want to talk about the pervasive use of video and what's happening out at West Texas A&M. And video has become viral at West Texas A&M, using both video and rich media in the school to change the way the faculty and the administration communicates, not only with the students, but also with other within other departments. That information is centrally managed and then disseminated broadly through more than 100 digital signs that are on campus. That information ranges from uh, events that are taking place on campus. That same infrastructure is used in the event of an emergency. That same inf uh, infrastructure is also used for cafeteria uh, communications, but we're, they're also finding that uh, their president and other senior members of their staff are leveraging that same infrastructure in order to disseminate messaging across the campus. So what I want to give you uh, a taste of right now is what we call this borderless classroom. Just so that you can see it, we kind of uh, describe telepresence as chocolate. And you kind of have to taste the chocolate. It's kind of hard to describe it. So what I'm going to do is have one of my colleagues, who is a Cisco employee but is also an adjunct professor, join me on stage virtually from his remote classroom. Can we bring Lance uh, forward on, please? Hi, good morning, and good evening uh, in India. Good morning. All right, Lance, <laughs> thanks for joining us, Lance. 
Thank you for letting me be here this morning, Lily. It's my privilege and pleasure, ma'am. All right. So Lance, why don't you talk with us a little bit about what you do um, as an adjunct professor, how you moderate your classroom by leveraging video and collaboration technologies. Absolutely. And let me tell you, as we're getting started here this morning, uh, that if there are some video hiccups or things, it's 100% my end. We had a tornado touchdown one half mile north of where I'm standing right now last night. And um, we've had quite a bit of damage. And so please forgive any video hiccups that may occur as we go through this process together. Um, I actually teach for the University of Maine adjunct, and I have six sites spread around the state of Maine where there are teachers working on their graduate degrees. To that end, there are so many amazing teachable moments that happen within that classroom environment. It's incumbent on me to be able to capture those moments and bring those moments immediately back into class. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip right over here real quickly to the recording device that is capturing all of our content right now. This is the way the class works. It meets from 3.30 to uh, 6.30 Eastern Time, 2.30, 5.30 Central, and we record those teachable moments and make them available after the fact. Once we have captured the moment, we simply disconnect like I've done now, and that recording is immediately available for consumption. My students at that point begin to break into small groups via their interactive video client, spanning the sites, and discuss the video content that they're watching. So we've got John from site A, Bill from site B, Sue from site C, all jumping onto their video laptop client, and they begin to watch back immediately after the fact, the recorded message, and talk about how it applies to their individual circumstances. Now guys and ladies, for me, this was not possible when I started teaching via video several years back. The cacophony of sound that is created when multiple sites dialogue simultaneously makes the interaction indiscernible. But when we can break them all the way down to that laptop, now we can have very focused individual small groups. Their small group discussion becomes the genesis for the next step in our class evolution for that night. So they talk it over, they bring back a consensus via video, and then they present back to the class that spawns the next conversation, which becomes the next teachable moment, which is then recorded, and we move the class through that way very organically. Now, as I've been talking to you, that recording has done several things. I know that I'm on a pretty tight time schedule, Lily, so tell me if you'd like for me to talk. I heard you mentioning show and share. Would you like for me to head to show and share real quick? Sure. All right. So let me get back over here because as I've been talking, like I said, the recording has been doing several things. One of those is flowing into the portal that Lily mentioned earlier, show and share. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the tab that says most recent. And once I hit that tab that says most recent, I'm going to click that first link. And the exact same recording that you saw a moment ago is now embedded in this social media portal. The beautiful part is my students are able to click this plus icon. When they do, it provides a context for their questions that then embed right back into that timeline. As an instructor, when I'm watching commented video that I know my students have put out there, it's a paramount that it's not just a list of comments, but rather it is comments that are associated with a specific moment in time in that video. And that process allows me to understand what they were gleaning or maybe not gleaning as they watch that video content. So, let me just real quickly, Lily, before I give it back to you, head over to one of my students' recordings from her midterm a couple of weeks back. She's a math teacher. Uh, she's in Maine. Her name is Susie. And right this second, she was laying down her recording from her classroom. When this green and blue line intersect each other, you will see a new name pop in right here. Right now it's Ginger. And when those intersect, our next student who has commented will have that comment there. As the instructor, then I can feed back, or more importantly, my other students can begin to feed back to each other and comment and work through processes together in a totally time-shifted, asynchronous manner, but that flips right back into our live environment. Lily, um, I appreciate the opportunity to, to present to you about my class today. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lance. So again, 
just a taste of what's possible through the use of technology. But I want to take show and share a little bit further, another step further for you. And let me get this going here. Perfect. I had an opportunity to uh, watch a video from one of your own professors, Professor Grace. And so we put this video into our show and share solution and let's see what we're able to do. All right. Um, what I want you to do is see so if you have any questions from last video. time. So and, what uh, I was able to do with it in show and share, you'll see this man. button here that says course, auto transcript. That idea is, um, where you're going to begin to see on the screen the word is a full coming, transcription of, course, the word of this video. And so we're looking at what do sensations, when they get in, um, what is it like for us to experience um, something at a subliminal level? Well, the answer, well, first of all, any questions from what we talked about last time? Do you have any uh, questions or concerns out of the notes? What something I can also do sense. is let's just say at that basic I'm today. a Spanish speaking learner. We'll finish up looking at some I can of the actually major do a Spanish translation so you know, you do not need of the same the video of content. The eye or the ear. It's no a need to have there, a Spanish speaker. I, I can I'm take an English too much time on the video detail, so and transcribe it uh, and translate it. What I can also do, and Lance covered this just a little bit earlier, I'm going to put it back in English because I won't remember the words in Spanish. What this means. Um, how many have ever, uh, but I remember uh, Professor Grace saying something about a were, sensation. Um, so I want to go back to the video because my time is short. And I want to go back to the video, to that point in the video when he used the word sensation. When they get in, and um, I can do a search. Like for us to so now that I've um, been able to transcribe this video, well, now video answer, is searchable. Well, first of all, any questions from what we talked about last time? Do you have any, and I can do this uh, all in this tool notes, that we call that Show and sense. Share. We're looking at basic concepts okay. today. Oh. Now, the other thing I would say is, in What would, what would also have been possible in, in that the course of uh, Professor Grace talking about subliminal messaging, he spoke about the students not needing to understand the anatomy of the eye and the ear. But let's just th imagine for a moment that just before his class, he was able to leverage telepresence technology to possibly connect with Dr. Ben Carson and have a consultation with him about the processes in the brain that are triggered through subliminal messaging, thus enhancing his content that he's delivering out to a student base. He can record that content, that conversation with Dr. Carson, and then make that content available later to students in his class and classes in the future. So just imagine, the possibilities are endless. I also want to um, talk with you a little bit today, and I have another guest speaker who's going to join me on stage, who's uh, Tom Scanlon, who's the CIO of the Massachusetts uh, Institute of Pharmacy. What they've done is to really change the whole definition of what they call a campus. And I don't want to steal his thunder, so I'm going to let Tom. Tom, are you there? Yes, I am, Olivia. Hi, Tom. And Thanks for I joining us. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, participate in, in, in presenting our classrooms or our, you know, Mass College of Pharmacy's interpretation of the 21st century classroom. Um, you know, at this point, we've, we've been using video conferencing classrooms for, you know, going into our eighth year. And unfortunately, um, I'm in one of my, in a, in a new sonography lab, I'm not actually in one of my classrooms at this point because they were all in use. Uh, but I do have some, some, some pictures and, and want to describe you know, what we've done over the years to, to really maximize the, the, not only the student learning environment, but you know, for faculty as well. And if I could just bring up a couple pictures and uh, I'll disappear for a while and uh, I'll kind of talk you through everything. 
Great, and, and Tom, if you can also share with them your, uh, your campus uh, topology, how you have multiple campuses yeah. and throughout the state. Sure, well we have, Mass College of Pharmacy has three campuses, uh, two campuses located about 40 miles apart in Massachusetts, you know, Boston and Worcester. And then we have a campus, a smaller campus up in Manchester, New Hampshire. So in 2004, the, you know, the president decided that we were going to go through and expand and into New Hampshire. And rather than duplicating the, the faculty and staff required to, to run a full campus, we elected to go through it and set up video conferencing classrooms. And what that allowed us to do is we still put some faculty up in the Manchester location, but we were able to go through and just spread things out and not have to incur the, the, the additional cost of, of faculty. And, you know, let's face it, we had great faculty. We didn't actually have to go through and, and hire, you know, go through that whole hiring process um, to go through and track those guys down. So in this case, we went through and designed video conferencing classrooms. Are you seeing that? Are you able to see that picture or are you just seeing me at this point? We're still seeing you, Tom. Well, let's try that. Now is it coming across? Not yet. We're still seeing you. Well, uh, all right. Well, we'll continue. I'll leave it up there. We'll see if it makes it across. Okay. Um, so the idea, the idea being we wanted to go through and provide you know, really the same classroom experience as if you were you know, sitting in the, in the local, uh, local offered offer class. So what we did was using Cisco's technology, we went through and installed you know, high-definition cameras. And originally, they weren't high-def, but we were able to go through and we positioned the, the instructor console in the center of the room. We have projectors on either side. And you know, being able to go through and give that high-definition quality uh, for local and remote students. Then what we did is very similar to you know, Cisco Telepresence, which you know, is really more of a boardroom uh, scenario. We applied that for a classroom where we actually went through and you know, with a number of different codecs, we went through and provided that same capability but for an audience. So what we ended up doing was we projected on the rear of the wall or on, on rear-facing plasmas the remote audience for either side of the room. So the idea being, if you're a, an instructor, you're looking out over your classroom, and up on the back wall, on the left and right sides of the wall, you see the left and right sides of the remote audience. So the idea is, you, we called it uh, you know, stadium view seating. So you were actually able to go through and see everyone at one time. I mean, that was one of the things that, that our faculty wanted to make sure that they could do, that they could interact with the students on the remote, on the remote end. Um, one of the other things that, that we did was we installed or we made sure that we had ceiling uh, the audio science microphones, which we installed on the ceilings and, and left on all the time. And this allowed, you know, uh, the, the freedom of, of, of interaction with the remote class. You didn't have to raise your hand or hit a microphone. You're actually able to go through and just, you know, interrupt in a, a faculty member just as you normally would in a classroom. Uh, it did lead to some complaints. You know, we had people that if someone had a cold on the other end uh, and they were, you know, coughing or sneezing, um, you know, students might complain that they could hear that. Well, that actually worked for us because that's the idea. We were trying to go through and combine the rooms so that, you know, they would have heard that person coughing if they were sitting behind them. So it actually worked out very well for us. Tom, can you talk um, a little bit about it, some of the results and, and what benefits you've reaped from this investment? Yeah, um, you know, what we ended up finding out is uh, the remote classes, uh, students in the, in the, on the remote ends of, of the sessions actually did better or performed better on exams than the folks local. Um, they, whether they were, you know, forced or, or you know, less distracted with um, the, the other class or, or what, they were able to go through and, and really get that information. What we also do for those, you know, and, and it could also help, is we record, digitally record all the sessions. 
and we make those sessions available for students scholarship for them to review. You know, so if you don't get a concept, you're able to go through and uh, you know go back and, and review it. We don't have to show and share yet, but um, you know they're able to go through and review those concepts and, and go back and, and ask questions of their faculty. So it really works out well for them. Um, from the perspective of you know, what the student response and feedback has been, it's really been great. I mean, when we've gone through our, our physician assistants, even though they're separated by you know, 90 miles, they, they really bond, they're able to actually do group projects in the classrooms based upon you know, just being able to, to lead those sessions on. We lead the, the systems are used you know, almost 50 hours a week we leave them connected all the time, so it's you know they they really have a, an instant communication with you know their classmates from the other campuses. Okay, well, thank you so much, Tom. We appreciate you uh, coming out and sharing your experience with telepresence, and again, how you've redefined what a campus even uh, looks like, and how you have bridged the gap and created this continuous presence between your three campuses in Massachusetts. So, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you. One other way that uh, campuses are being redefined, I had an opportunity last year to visit Songdo, Korea. And lots and lots and lots of innovation happening there. Uh, entire cities are being built in Songdo. And one of the concepts that they had was at their Songdo Global Academy is how do they bring expertise into the country because they are not able to bring ex bring their students in mass quantity here to the states but they certainly want to leverage the infrastructure of education that we have here so what they've done is they've set up a campus and it's all based on Cisco telepresence so you will have multiple rooms of telepresence where as a student I may have my English with Yale, I'm being taught my science classes by Johns Hopkins, and then I'm having math classes with professors at MIT. I never leave Korea. I go right to one campus and I move from classroom to classroom, but now I'm being educated by the world's best minds. Again, imagine what's possible. And now, how do we extend the reach? I mean, we, we've spoken a lot about what's possible, but we don't want to leave that knowledge base here. We, as believers, have a responsibility to branch out well beyond our own borders. And so, uh, if you would mind joining me here on the stage, we're looking at how do we extend this wonderful community of Christian education mm -hmm. beyond the borders of Southern California? Yeah. And how do we take this yeah. even out to India? Yeah, we're just beginning to think of what that might look like. So we decided we'd invite uh, uh, a few of our friends in India to uh, be in a bit of a conversation with us. Yeah. And uh, Ramesh right. Langdi is, is here. And I'm going to invite uh, Greg Leith, who's our uh, Director of Strategic Alliances, to um, maybe uh, Ramesh, uh, can you hear us OK? Yes, I can hear you very well. OK, what time is it there in New Delhi, my brother? <laughs> right, it's about 10 o'clock, 10.30 right now. OK, thanks for, thanks for staying up a little <laughs> bit late for us and uh, have a cup of tea on me. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, Ramesh, thanks for taking time with two of your colleagues to uh, be with us today. We're here in Southern California at uh, about uh, 12 hours before you, uh, 10 past 10. And I'm going to let Greg ask you a few questions. Again, this is our good brother, uh, Ramesh. And Ramesh is uh, CEO of uh, Cooperative Outreach of India, also working on the Peace Plan project with Rick Warren and Saddleback. So R Ramesh, we're just anxious to talk about a little bit of a collaboration now. And Greg, let me turn it over to you to ask Ramesh a few questions. Good evening, Ramesh. Good evening, Greg. How are you doing? I'm very well. It's been a long time since I spent uh, 18 hours on a plane and three more hours on a plane and four more hours on a train getting to you. But this is instant. 
That's right, and this is what the technology is all about. So, Ramesh, uh, we've got just a few minutes, so help us just set the context. Take us to India, under, help us understand what does seminary education in India look like? Well, when we talk about seminary education in India, we do not have a, uh, the robust facilities and the progressive facilities as you have in North America. And as last time you were here, we were discussing about some of the needs in our country. And we discussed about uh, the training of the leadership. And that is one thing I would like to emphasize uh, that we need to train uh, many, many leaders uh, for the emerging church, they would continue to provide leadership and guidance. So this is one thing that we have been uh, lacking here. We do not have very many uh, trained leaders. You know, our country, in northern part of India, we have over 500 million people. And uh, we do not have uh, more than maybe a few hundred uh, PhD holders. We don't have uh, those top class leadership here. So I think that's one thing that we would like to do and uh, uh, emphasize and focus on that. So I do remember that one time when we closed our time uh, with dinner and I looked over at you and Dr. Richard Howell and said, uh, what is the greatest need of the Christians in India, for the country of India, what is the greatest need? And uh, tell us what you told me. Yeah, the greatest need in our country, like uh, we have a billion people and uh, uh, out of billion, you know, we have just 2.5% uh, uh, is the Christian population in India, and especially in northern part of India, it's less than 1%. So the greatest need here is to advance the kingdom. Greatest need here is to prepare the leadership that would take on the challenge of the sagging moral of the community and continue to help uh, provide uh, progressive leadership to the church. And this is what we have been looking at is uh, to have a kind of uh, technology like uh, we see all this uh, today. And if that comes through, I think we would be able to uh, uh, advance a uh, little uh, a proper way and we may be able to achieve what we want to do here. Great. Well, take us to summertime in Delhi. I know that uh, young people from all over North India that you've met in rural communities uh, get on their bicycles and uh, take all the savings they have. Uh, the community raises up funds, they get on a train, and they come to Delhi for training with Cooperative Outreach of India. What could that look like if we dreamed about the future in a practical way with technology like this? How could Biola University help train pastors in India? Well, the technology like this, like Cisco and the Biola, which is one of the world leader in uh, providing excellent education, if that comes forward, I think uh, the whole scenario is going to be changed drastically. The, uh, world-class leaders without having to travel all the way here and uh, our people without having to go all over uh, to the United States or to England or to other Western countries, they would be able to get uh, uh, teachings from world-class teachers, professors. They would be able to have excellent uh, 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 curriculum that would be provided through all the facilities that is available and we would be able to save a lot of time. We would be able to save a lot of money and we would be able to break down all the barriers that uh, do exist uh, in our country. So I think this technology is going to uh, uh, help a country advance in a, a much uh, better way that we can uh, imagine right now. Introduce your friends to us, pastors from, uh, from your training program with Cooperative Outreach of India. Tell us about them. Yes, we have here with us uh, Mr. Vinod Lazarus David, uh, and he has been uh, one of the person who has trained, uh, and he has been training our leadership school here, and he provides leadership. And also we have here Mr. Vijay. He has been trained here, and he has been continuing to provide leadership in the Cooperative Outreach of India, and we have been trying to reach out the entire North India with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, Vijay. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. What do you think about this technology? 
This is really amazing, sir. It's uh, going to break the barriers. Like it's going to provide uh, excellent leadership at the grassroots levels. I feel like it's going to benefit thousands of people in um, acquiring this technology, and they can have a proper, uh, a proper kind of uh, system where they can be trained very well. And they, as you have mentioned, like they're, they're traveling from villages like uh, to get the uh, trainings and these training facilities can be provided at a very minimum level and at their home and or at the, any classroom or any uh, excellent setup like this. Thanks, Vijay. And uh, Vinod, hello. Yes. <clears throat> any thoughts? Yeah. In a, in a few moments, just give us some final thoughts. Yeah, this is so good to talking to you about this, and especially our country, India. They need really this type of technologies because we are not so advanced. And especially our people, those who are working in remote areas, and for them, space and time is a factor. And because of inconvenience and the distance, you know, it sometimes becomes so difficult for them to come every time and for us also to go there and talk to them and provide some information and educate them. So with this technology, we believe uh, God will really help us to reach out to people through the messages we have and the, the methods that we can use by this technology. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vinod, and thank you, Vijay, and thank you, Ramesh. Now, Ramesh, I'm going to ask you to do something. We're talking about technology. We're talking about leadership, yes. we're talking, talking about education, but last time I checked, it was God who created atoms, it was God who created bits. And so I wonder if we could reach across through those bits that he's connected us together with and have you pray for the future of India and this technology. And we will all pray with you. Right, so maybe uh, let's pray and let's bless the uh, nation of India. We are billion souls. Let's commit this time into his hand. Lord, we want to thank you and praise you for this time, for this fellowship. We want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for that you have provided this technology in order to reach out to billions of people around. We want to thank you and praise you that we have a leadership in Viola. We have a leadership in different parts of the world that cares for the people who are lost. And we pray that, Lord, you would bless them and that, Lord, you deliver them, Lord, from all kind of uh, sicknesses, all kind of problems, all kind of difficulties so they may see that, Lord, you are the true God. Lord, we commit all of us into your mighty care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And we say amen with you here from Southern California. And thank you, all three of you, Vijay, Ramesh, and uh, Vinod, for being with us from Delhi. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And God bless you. Thank you. So you've had a little bit of a taste of my world. Because uh, Lance was in Oklahoma. We spoke with Tom in Massachusetts. And now we've gone to India. And we've never left. And this is what I do all day long at work. I get up in the morning and I speak with Europe and then I talk to the U.S. all day and I may stay a little bit late to talk with Asia Pac and then I go home for dinner. So just in closing, how do we get here? And really, it all starts with a vision. Creating a vision and a strategy is going to be the key to success. Um, you know, we need to develop solutions and you do that through partnerships, have a consolidated implementation plan. You can't be fragmented. Um, you gotta decide that you wanna do this holistically. You have to measure. But I'm gonna tell you the key here is vision. And that's why I'm really grateful for the opportunity to come and talk with you about what's possible and to help you imagine because it's the vision that's gonna help you to get to where you wanna go. And so thank you again for uh, allowing us, uh, Cisco, to be here. And uh, we look forward to continuing to partner with you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.